Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on prescribing. In this video, we're going to cover fluid replacement and electrolyte imbalances. This is a very brief introduction focusing on how to actually prescribe on a drug chart so that you know what it looks like. I can cover fluid balance charts calculations in another video. So for fluids, you want to go all the way to the back of the drug chart. And as you can see, it's a very simple format of date, time, the infusion that you want to put in, whether you want to add in any medications, volume, route, and signature and GMC number. So we're going to start off by putting in the date, the time at which you want the fluid to be given. As you can see here, there's different types of IV fluids that you can give. There's a long history of debates over whether you would give a sodium chloride or plasmalite. I've mostly seen plasmalite given. Of course, it also depends on the context of the patient and what their electrolytes look like. So if you have someone, for example, who has a very high potassium, you may want to give them sodium chloride instead of plasmalite, which has more potassium. So since we're covering very common fluid prescriptions that you'll be seeing, we're going to prescribe a slow bag of plasmalites. So in the infusion solution, I've written up plasmalite. There's no drug that I want to give with the plasmalite, so it's just going to be crossed out. Total volume is going to be a liter. The route is going to be IV and the duration of the infusion is eight hours. The next bag I'm going to write up is going to be a stat fluid. So this is in case you get called for a patient uh, who looks dehydrated or has a very low blood pressure and you want to see if they respond to fluids. You can give a small amount very quickly. That's what stat means. So here I've given plasmalite and I've written up 500 mLs because the patient is fit, has no history of heart failure, or chronic kidney disease, or any other risk factors. Um, and I've just put stats. You can always write 15 minutes to be very clear, but oftentimes you'll just see written stats. Write my GMC number and signature again. Another type of fluid you may want to prescribe is sodium chloride. So once you've checked the patient's electrolytes, you can write up sodium chloride 0.9%, put the date and time. Again, I'm not adding any drug at the moment. I've put 500 mils bolus, IV root, and here I've just made up a rate in mils per hour just to show you that you can fill in this section um, as well. If you do add a drug, you would write it in that box and then the volume, so 500 mils, would be the total of the sodium chloride and the drug that you're giving. What you want to take into consideration is the state of the patient, the age. If they're very old, if they have a history of heart failure or chronic kidney disease, you're going to want to give slower fluids, whereas if it's a young patient who's fit and healthy with no comorbidities, their body is going to be able to cope with a quicker replacement of fluids. You can also fill in the section of rates in mils per hour, um, but it's the same thing as putting the volume and the duration of the infusion, so it's not always filled in. So once I've put the volume and the duration of the infusion, I just sign and put my GMC number, and then the rest of it is going to be filled in by the nurse who administers the fluid. And just to show you one more, so again, right at the date and time. And in this case, I'm giving a bolus, a stat bolus to an elderly patient with a history of heart failure. So in this case, I'm going to give plasmalite, give 250 mils. So I'm giving a smaller dose. Typically, you'll either give 250 mils, 500 mils for stat doses. Um, and I've written up stats, 15 minutes, signature and GMC number. In terms of timing, fluids are usually given in even number of hours. So you would see two, four, six, eight, ten hourly rather than three or five hourly. Now we get to electrolyte replacements. So oftentimes patients will get maybe even daily bloods and you will look at things like sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, and they may be high or low. In the case of derangement, you can replace them either orally or IV. So the first point of call is usually oral. Um, for example, for magnesium, you will give magnesium glycerophosphate, and they're in four millimole tablets. So I've written up two tablets replacements, and you usually give these for two to three days and then put a review sign. So here I've circled a box um, and put an RV, so review, so that you can see whether the magnesium has been replaced and if we can stop it or if we need to continue it. And in the indication, I've also put what the magnesium level is and on which day that was taken. As you can see, the timings are three times a day, so 8, 6 and 22. The next one is for calcium. And if you see that the calcium is low, you can give Adcal D3. Again, I've given two of those tablets. I've put the oral administration and two times a day, so 8 and 8. GMC signature always and the starch dates. And in the instructions, I've just put to have this between meals. You can always find the um, advice for administration in the BNF section for each medication. Next one is for low potassium. In this case, you oftentimes give Sandake. Um, again, it's two tablets, three times a day, so 8, 16, 22. Oral route, you put the start date, signature, GMC number, 
and I forgot to do it, but make sure you put in a review date uh, in two to three days for each of these replacements, just to make sure that the patient isn't still given this once the electrolyte has actually been replaced. If the potassium is not going up with oral replacement, make sure you check the magnesium, because if the magnesium is low, you need to replace the magnesium first before you can actually replace the potassium effectively. If after a few days of oral replacement, the electrolytes are still not improving, you may need to consider um, an IV replacement. As always, for any electrolyte derangement, make sure that you identify what the cause of this derangement is so that you can fix the cause rather than just replace the electrolytes. It can be things like medications that you may want to put on hold or that the patient is vomiting or has diarrhea. Those are common causes. The next one is for a low phosphate. And so here you would give phosphate sandose tablets. I've put two again and an oral route and it's eight and eight, so twice a day. And again, make sure you put a review date after two or three days. Now we get to IV replacements. So depending on your trust guidelines, your seniors may want you to replace the electrolytes with IV or maybe if the levels of the electrolytes are too low, you may want to go straight to IV rather than starting with oral replacement. I won't give you a set range of when to start giving IV replacement because it really depends on your trust guidelines. So make sure you have a look at those. But this is just to show you how to prescribe the IV fluids. So in this case, I'm giving sodium chloride. So this is another way of writing it out, normal saline. And you may see it written in this way, which is why I've done it um, and in the drug section you put 40 millimoles of potassium chloride you can give more but this is a sort of standard dose one liter IV and you want to make sure that you don't replace this too quickly you should have instructions in your trust guidelines again um, but here I've given it eight hourly to make sure that it's a slow um, replacement and the other one is going to be for magnesium replacement so here I've put the date and time again in normal saline and the drug to be given is going to be eight millimoles of magnesium sulfate. The volume is going to be 100 milliliters IV route over 30 minutes. Again, GMC and signature. If in doubt, always check with the BNF and your trust guidelines. Your trust guidelines are going to be specific to your area, so that's going to be the most precise thing that you need to follow. I really hope that you found this video useful and that it's made you more comfortable with prescribing fluids and replacing electrolytes. If you have any more questions or any videos you'd like to see, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments down below. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!